Hello, I'm Matt Thomas from King and Eek, and I'm back here on Sonic Academy with my lockdown locks. Draw your eyes away from them if you possibly can. I know it's mesmerizingly horrific, but it is a world catastrophe, and that is specifically the hair, not the underlying uh, pandemic. As well as my lockdown locks, I'm here with this. Yes, what could it be? Well, you see, if this uh, video wasn't titled with the name of what it is, we could have all kinds of fun with me saying, oh, wonder what it could be, eh? Oh, it could be a surfboard for a smurf. And kind of hilarious things I come out with ordinarily. But unfortunately, you know that it's a touche or a touchy or a touch hair or a touch, depending on how you like to pronounce your French. Because it is French. And as we know, I enjoy talking about French products and getting all excited about how gallic they are. So we are going to say it's the touche. Um, which, in discussions with um, Sonic Academy chums, brought back memories of Touche Turtle, who right now, by the magic of editing, is appearing in my hand. I don't, I don't know if we can afford that kind of budget. I don't even know if we can afford like to put a clip of Touche Turtle in, let alone the CGI to put him in my hand. There he is, imaginary Touche Turtle, which is completely pointless because who cares about Touche Turtle when this Touche is available? So why do I care? Keep watching, folks. Keep watching. So the Touche, it's a controller. It's not a theremin. You do need a keyboard to use alongside the Touche, so you can play your keyboard with one hand and shape the sound with the other. So you might be looking at your keyboard next to you and going, yeah, I've got a mod wheel and a pitch bend. Thanks, Matt. I kind of got that covered. There's plenty of situations they'll likely do the job for you, but um, where the touche comes into its own is how responsive and flexible it is at turning like your slightest expressive motions into controller data. If I just put this on full sensitivity. I'm barely touching that. So you can see there's a lot of range in this thing. Rather like the way string players can use one hand to control the pitch of their instrument, I was using the lateral motion there to kind of give the vibrato effect you get with a string. And then obviously you could do things like bowing with the, uh, the push down at the front and back. There's a bunch of things you can get out of the two shape. And the nice thing is it's not limited. Any of these controllers, you can assign them where you want to. So they can go to all kinds of destinations. It's currently on you, know, obvious stuff like pitch and filter and that kind of thing. You can send it where you like. Now, in terms of how it kicks these things out, it comes out as MIDI via USB, but you've also got dedicated physical MIDI sockets, little kind of quarter, well, no, eighth of an inch little sockets on the back, which break out into the classic five pin connection. And you've also got four channels of CV if you're on the modular tip, so you can use this to kick out voltage as well. Now, if you're not interested in all the, the physical connections for like using it in a live setup without a laptop, which is why you need the separate MIDI and CV, if you just want to use it with SoftSense, you can get the Touche SE. That's about half the price, and that just covers the USB MIDI output. And obviously, you can still route that via your laptop to all kinds of destinations. So there are two models here. They both do exactly the same. They kind of feel exactly the same. One's got a wood top, the other one hasn't. But they do the same thing, just one is better set up for uh, connecting to real hardware in the, in the real world. So an overview of the actual Touche controller itself. The unit's dominated by this large touch plate here. It creates four different kinds of controller. There are lateral controller motions moving left and right. And you can see as I'm moving the touch plate, I can move it sort of laterally, so it's remaining flat but going left to right. Or I can sort of tip and bend. There's a bit of kind of wobble in the controller there. Both generate the same kind of controller. It's just a question of whichever suits the performance you're doing. And you've also got a front and a back pressure. Now, these aren't like the hinge on a Wawa, where you kind of it's one or the other. You can actually do both. I can bring in the front and then bring in the back as well, or vice versa, you know, and I can release one or keep the other down. So these are not either or. You can push the whole thing down for both controllers at once. You can do one, the other, fade between. And all these can be done at the same time as each other. So, of course, I can be leaning right and generating both the front and the back controller pressures, left, right, whichever. So you can see it's quite flexible. Just It's just four controllers, but they interrelate to create quite an expressive number of outputs. Next down, we've got the sensitivity encoder here. Now, currently it's set to two. I can roll this up to five, and at five, you'll see that even the slightest pressure is generating controller outputs. 
down the other end, I have to really lean into the controller to actually generate those outputs. Last of all, I have two buttons down here, which are used to select through the Touche's presets. So you haven't got to reassign the Touche to every single instrument. You can simply set up in its own memory the controller assignments you want, and then you have those in banks you can step through. It's worth noting that the feel of the Touche is quite configurable. This touch plate lifts off, it's magnetic. Underneath we have a slide here. I can adjust this backwards and forwards, and it creates a different touch for the left and right movements. And this little funny hair curler looking thing here creates the sense of sort of pressure that's in the machine. So both those things can be adjusted. You can buy new little hair roller guys. You can even buy this wooden surface. You can buy replacements in different woods if you want a different color, or you can buy it in the same lovely polycarbon that the rest of the machine is made out of. So all that is wonderful, but how does it play and sound?
One of the things I find most enjoyable using the Touche is it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Wave Station and the Profit VS. You know, there's synths where you shape the balance of the oscillators with a, a joystick. Now, obviously, it's not, you can do that kind of wave mixing using the Touche. It's not necessarily that you've got to set it up to do that. It's more the idea that you've got this control of three or four controllers at once as you sort of move a single mechanical item. So I've got a really very simple CZ, Arturia CZ brass sound on here. I've put a lot of reverb on to make it sound important and spacious, but this is absolutely nothing special. But if I just simply push around a few parameters on the Touche with this sound, Obviously, big reverb makes anything sound groovy, but that's a very, very organic flowing way to mess around with a sound that's ultimately just a little bit of brass coming out of a, uh, a cheap digital synth. So that aspect of the Touche, yes, there are synths that can cover these things with joysticks, give you something of that idea, but it's far more responsive. I mean, one of the nice things you can do with the Touche is put it on full sensitivity. And this is a trick I don't think you really encounter almost anywhere else, which is you can create percussive modulation. just by simply tapping. I mean, top tip, use your fingernails, folks. So there's plenty to explore in this. That strumming, drumming effect, very hard to achieve any other way without some very complicated routing. Now, in order for the Touche to communicate with the soft synths it's controlling, there is a nice piece of software called Lie. Lie is basically a plugin host that allows for the easy visual mapping of the Touche to pretty much any desired parameter. Additionally, the, the left and the right can be switched to act as a pitch bend for vibrato. Now, Lie can also be a plugin itself in your DAW. So you have a plugin that then hosts a plugin. Now, that sounds complex, but it does behave itself and it's pretty seamless. So the way it works in practice is this you pull up the synth you're interested in. This case, we've got the Arteria CZV. And over here, I have up to eight mappings. And each one of these I can select whether I'm mapping the front, back, left, or right. Now, all I do to assign it to a particular parameter is click here and I get a full list of all the parameters in the Casio CZ. So currently, for example, we have what's called the DCW depth acts kind of like a filter on the line one of the CZ, like oscillator one. Now I can swap that. I can go in here and say, OK, I want to control the noise level with that same controller. And now, it's that simple. And in terms of how much noise, we've got a slider here. We can have a huge difference, a small difference. So we can have, or we can have it so that the noise is actually in. That bottom slider means it stays in at all times. We can just make it louder. So you can set these offsets to the parameter as it currently exists in the synth preset itself. The Touche comes with a copy of the UVI Workstation VST, which has a number of presets already pre-mapped for use with the Touche, as well as Expressive's own sounds. You'll find really quite impressively, if you go on their website, they have a number of presets already made for dozens and dozens of uh, currently popular hardware synths and software synths. So chances are, if you're not just a vintage gearhead like myself, you'll be able to kind of buy a Touche go on the website and find even, even if it's just 10 or 12 to get you going, mapped presets that are already there for the Touche to go straight onto the presets in your synth. And from that, you'll you know be able to find it. It is really easy to set your own stuff up. Now, as well as the bundled UVI workstation, Expressively also sell a dedicated sample modeling plugin, the, uh, the RK series. These emulate the violin, viola, and cello. Now, these are set up specifically to use with the Touche, and it sounds really very good, certainly in an ensemble piece. And having sort of full articulation of tone, volume, and pitch allows you to control aspects like vibrato 
in a way that you can't really kind of achieve with many sample libraries. Ultimately, they're limited to recording a number of vibrato passes, whereas with the RK stuff, you can set it yourself. So, you know, simple things. That kind of change of rate control is something, as I say, specifically tricky to do with a sample library. So there we go, that's a race through the touche controller. There's more that we've done with it, and we could look in some detail at how the RK sounds, particularly uh, are controlled using this uh, combination of touch plate and lateral motion, etc. But maybe we'll come back and look at another day. All I'm doing today is giving you a quick heads up that this exists, the sort of thing it can do. Pros and cons. Um, pros, it's absolutely unrivaled touch sensitivity at these higher settings. I mean, you can like literally rest a finger on the touch plate and get controller output. Well, it up there, and you'll see just the lightest touch. Uh, the LIE software, very easy to use, and the fact that you can host it inside of DAW as a plugin makes it really simple to integrate it into your workflow, which isn't always the case with some of these advanced controllers. And if you don't want to use LIE for some reason, the Touche simply outputs its data as four MIDI CCs, and you can map those wherever you want to. Um, cons, it's a little niche. It's not necessarily for everyone, but that's not a bad thing. I mean, you know, uh, McDonald's is for everyone, apparently, and hmm. Um, if you're just programming loops and beats, maybe it's not going to be central to your workflow, but at the same time as you heard there, dicking around with the arpeggios and some of the big fat pads, it certainly could be. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. It takes a little learning to get the best out of it, particularly if you're doing things like uh, the lateral motion, vibrato, getting that um, takes a little bit of work. But that's true for anybody playing you know, a stringed instrument that uses that kind of vibrato touch. You need to get good at it by doing it, and uh, there's no, no hardship in spending a bit of time using your gear. Really, for people trying to interact with their synths in a more organic and immediate way, I think that 200 quid, particularly you know, the SE model, this 400 quid, the Rolls Royce, lovely. If you're using modular and stuff, go for this. Uh, if you don't need those real hardware connections, 200 quid SE does exactly the same thing. Pretty affordable given what it adds to your music making capabilities. Rather like um, Rolly's Seaboard, it'll open up possibilities for musical controller sounds that it's pretty hard to achieve otherwise. And it's not just either or with these things. The, the way the seaboard works, that's great for one particular kind of uh, control and expressive playing. The way the touche works is good for another. Yes, it's going to tie up one of your hands while you're playing the keyboard, but you know, the entire orchestra is full of people who have pretty much one job to do and need both their hands to do it. Sometimes the most expressive music requires that we do more than just smack a white note or a black note and push a bit harder. So if you're into that sort of stuff, Go and try and demo one of these things. It is a really interesting and unusual piece of kit, and I'm quite a fan. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.